Hi, Mike Panja here. And today I'm going to revisit an old video that I did about a year ago. And that's the video on Thomas's date nut loaf. At the time, I had a theory of why a company would discontinue such a popular item where it was economically worthwhile. It seemed to be where people loved it. It was very popular. And uh, yet in December of 2013, they stopped selling it. Very strange. My theory at the time had to do with politics in the Middle East. And I thought perhaps getting dates might have been a problem for them and the supply. So it was just easier for them to drop the whole thing. I have a new theory now, which inspires me to do this video, which is Thomas's Date Nut Loaf Revisited. Here's what I'm thinking. I loved the original Date Nut Loaf that I made. I thought it was very, very good. But one thing bothered me about it is the fruit, the dates were a little bit more chewy and a little less juicy and succulent than I remembered from the original Date Nut Loaf from Thomas's. Thinking about it, it occurred to me that they may not have been dates at all. They might have been prunes. Now, why would they put prunes in a date nut loaf? Here's why. Because they taste better and they work better in the baked goods. But why, why would they want to call it Thomas's date prune loaf? Prunes don't have a good image. They're kind of like health food and a laxative and they, they didn't want to associate that. My guess. So they come up, some advertising genius came up with the idea of just claiming it was a date nut loaf, not a prune nut loaf. And that worked great. Today, I put together the same recipe, the same cocky, copycat recipe with prunes, dried prunes instead of dates. And by golly, that's exactly the taste that I remember pre-2013 from the Thomas's company. So let's try it together and I hope you'll enjoy it. Here's the recipe for my date nut loaf. We'll start by combining the dry ingredients, starting with the prunes, which I've cut in half. And the brown sugar all-purpose flour, the salt, and the baking soda. Technical difficulties prevent me from showing you how I added in the butter and the hot black coffee. Hold that all together. Now the brandy. Now I want to fork beat one egg. Adding the egg to the mix, folding it in. Pure vanilla extract. Finally, the walnuts, we'll fold those in. I'm using a loaf pan that measures about four and a half by eight and a half inches. I've sprayed it with cooking spray, so we'll be able to get the loaf out later without sticking. Straighten it out. Flatten it out, smooth it out, and into the 350 degree oven we go for 50 minutes. And after 50 minutes,
Well, Magoo, you've done it again. What a beautiful piece of work this is. I really hope you're going to try it. You're going to be amazed. Even the venerated Thomas's loaf can't match it because when they package stuff in a factory, you lose that little bit of outside crispiness that comes with fresh baked goods, which is what we have here with our loaf. Wow, was it good. I just had some. Terrific. Please make it. Please make it. Do yourself a favor. Do me a favor by subscribing if you haven't done it already and by sharing this video with friends and family. Thanks again for watching. I look forward to seeing you again next time.